Hey everybody, welcome back to Amy Reads. So, we're doing something kind of fun today, um, and I don't know how long this is actually going to take, um, because it's going to be my first, like, secret video. Of course, if you're watching this, you'll have read the title, and you know what we're doing today. So this is a video in which I am rereading the five lowest rated books on my TBR that are favorites of mine, that I gave five stars once upon a time. Yes! Now some of these books I read a long time ago, some of them just a few years ago, but at the time I gave all five of these books five stars, but they have pretty stinky ratings on Goodreads. So I'm rereading these to see if I still like them that much, if I still would give them five stars. So we're gonna start I'm going to tell you um, what five books I'm reading, what their star ratings are, when they were published, and when I first read them. Um, and then it'll take me probably a few months, I don't know, to work this in. So I'm sure you'll be seeing a lot of different hair color throughout this vlog. The first one, let me find it here. Okay, this is a book I remember picking up in high school at my... Sorry, I'm sick as I'm filming this. Um... Pick this up in high school at my used bookstore for $2, and it is Swimming by Joanna Hershon. I have never heard anyone talk about this book ever before. I remember being so profoundly moved by this book at the time. Um, something about a young girl whose brother goes missing, or maybe he dies, and then later in life she tries to figure out what happened, and the brother's girlfriend at the time is involved. I don't remember specifics. This has a 3.26 on Goodreads. Not great. Um, it was first published in 2002, and I first read it in high school, I think around 2004. So I've not read this book in 15 years. Let's see if I still like it. Okay, the next one is actually Jane Unlimited by Kristen Kishore, but I am not rereading that because I just read it like uh, a month ago, and I love it. Uh, it has a 3.37 on Goodreads, so not stellar, but I love it. So not going to be rereading that one. The next one is a contemporary that I don't actually hear anybody talk about. I remember reading this um, when I first started. It's around the time that I first started watching booktube, but that is Scarlett Epstein Hates It Here by Anna Breslau. Like I said, I've never heard anybody else talk about this. I got it from the library. I thought it was really fun. It's really short. Um, I remember the main character really loving Seinfeld and writing fan fiction. Why I gave this five stars, I don't know, because I don't remember a ton about it. But um, this has a three point, sorry, I'm looking over to the side. This has a 3.48 on Goodreads. It was published in 2016, and I read it in 2016. So this is actually the most recent read on this list. The next one I don't actually have a copy of because a friend of mine borrowed it from me. That is... Someday, Someday, Maybe by Lauren Graham. This is Lauren Graham's first and to this day only um, like novel. And it's about a woman in the 1990s, very similar to herself, just trying to become an actress in New York City. Um, I gave this five stars at the time. Probably a lot of that is because I just love Lauren Graham. And I felt like it very much had her voice. But this has a 3.50 on Goodreads. And it was published in 2013, and I read it in 2014. Next is Landline by Rainbow Rowell. Um, this has a 3.55 on Goodreads. Originally published, let's see, in 2014, and I read it at the very beginning of 2015. I really love this Rainbow Rowell book, but obviously I gave it five stars when I read it four years ago. But um, this is about a couple, Georgie and her husband, Neil, and... Uh, they're like in their 30s. They have two kids. Georgie's a real workaholic and this is set around Christmas time and Neil takes his, their children to like his family in the Midwest to for Christmas break and Georgie decides to stay and do work and they're kind of struggling in their marriage because of stuff like that and um, so Georgie ends up finding this old landline phone at her mother's house and uses it to call Neil but she, when she calls Neil, she's actually talking to Neil from college when they first met. So Georgie has this weird, so there's a little of this like magical realism going on in this. So she has this opportunity to um, maybe right the wrongs in her marriage and kind of see where things have gone wrong. Because she is able to sort of 
talk, well, she's able to talk with the Neil that she fell in love with like 15 years before or something. So I remember really loving this book. We will see if I like it again. And the last one is The Dogs of Babel. And I cannot think of who, no, Carolyn Parkhurst, is that who wrote this, I think? Um, I don't remember a lot about this book. I remember it's about a couple. I remember a specific scene in this book involving like weird masks and being in New Orleans. That's all I remember. And I just read this, well, I guess it's been six years. I read this six years ago in 2013. This was originally published in 2004. Yeah, 2004. And it has a 3.56 on Goodreads. This is probably going to be a pretty long vlog. Uh, so tuck in and get yourself a little snack and uh, watch my hair change colors because this will probably take me a few months. But um, yeah, anyways, I'm going to reread these five books and see if they suck or if I still love them. Hello. Um, it's a few days later. It's like a week later. I am mostly better. I'm not sick anymore. Um, I do have a bit of a cough still, but I have a voice, so that's nice. And my hair, like promised, is a different color. Um, I wanted to catch you up because I finally started reading my first book for this particular secret video. Um, I started Someday, Someday, Maybe, which um, you saw in my last clip I don't actually have a copy of anymore. Um, so I decided to get this from the library and listen to it on audiobook. And at first I was like, maybe I shouldn't listen to it on audiobook because I feel like the fact that it's narrated by Lauren Graham will make me automatically like want to give it at five stars because I just love her so much. But I decided to listen to it on audiobook. Um, and so I started it yesterday. I meant to update you yesterday. It just didn't happen. I started it yesterday and um, I am exactly 25% through. I'm like a little over two hours into it. Um, and I like it. Uh, it's, it's been five years since I've read this book, so I didn't remember a ton of specifics. I remembered that the main character's name was Franny, which I think is very cute. Um, and that it has that kind of classic Lauren Graham wittiness to it. Um, and it definitely does. It, I like it a lot. So, um, I don't know yet if it will continue to be a five-star read, but that's what I've got. And then I also got Dogs of Babel by Carolyn Parkhurst from the library in ebook form. So I will probably start on that soon as well because the other three I have in physical form. And I'm really weird. Like I like to be reading. If I'm going to, I do like to read multiple things at once or I don't like to necessarily as much as I just do in order to get more things read. Um, but I like to have one physical, one ebook, one audiobook and not more than one of one of those like I don't like to be I don't like to have two um physical books going on at the same time and I don't know why I just am the way I am uh, but anyway I just wanted to give you a short little update on what I am currently reading and how I'm feeling about it so as I get farther into this audiobook I'll let you know and if I start Dogs of Babel I will let you know so anyway um talk to you later so it is a few days later um, <clears throat> I meant to update you all, but I did not. Um, but I just finished Someday, Someday, Maybe on audiobook. Um, and I definitely have changed my rating. It's not a five-star read for me. Um, I think I would give it a three. If I were reading this book for the first time now, um, I think I'd give it a three. And I think that while I love Lauren Graham and I do feel like the parts she does best are like the, that very kind of Lorelai Gilmore witty, you know, talking a lot sort of thing, which I realize is a character, but also Lauren Graham is, a, is admittedly a lot like that. Um, I felt like it was otherwise just a kind of so-so chiclet book. Um, so if you don't know, this is about a woman named Franny who it's uh, 1995. She is a struggling actress in New York City and she has given herself a deadline of three years to, you know, succeed whatever, excuse me, whatever she succeed, whatever she deems as successful. That's what I'm trying to say. 
Um, and she's like six months away from that deadline and, you know, nothing's happened. So, um, I wasn't crazy about the romance in this book. It felt a little underdeveloped. Um, I would have liked to have seen more <clears throat> from that. And I don't know, like I realize it's 1995 in the book, but there's a lot of like diet talk and just, it's so, it's so hard now because I just pick up on that stuff constantly and um, not that I can't enjoy something that has diet talk in it and also, you know, this was 25 years ago. So first book down, I would not give it five stars today. And I, I am not giving it five stars. I would give it three stars. Um, I still enjoyed it. Uh, the experience of listening to it was great. Um, I would recommend it still to people who want a, um, you know, kind of a fluffy chiclet read. It's not fantastic or phenomenal, but it's worth reading. Uh, but yeah, I would give it three stars. Moving on, um, like I said in my last clip, I was going to start reading Dogs of Babel because I have that um, out from the library in ebook, and I still have it out from the library in ebook, but I've not started it yet. So that is going to be my next book that I start. I will catch up with you. I'm just being really rambly. I will catch up with you when I start Dogs of Babel. I am reading like three other books right now that aren't for this challenge. So, um, but I'm not reading an ebook. So this will be my ebook that I'm reading. Uh, so anyway, I will film another clip once I have started with Dogs of Babel. Why are you such a turd? Are you trying to get under the covers? Jamie, why are you so beautiful? Hello. Uh, it's me, obviously. There's Scott back there. Say hi, Scott. Hello. <laughs> I won't show him since he is half naked. Um, anyways, I just wanted to update you. I did start uh, Dogs of Babel uh, yesterday, I guess. Uh, like I said, I'm reading it in ebook from the library, and uh, I am only like five or six percent in, and I really did not remember much about this book. Um, the very opening of the book is this guy's wife falls slash jumps out of their apple tree in their backyard and dies. And their dog was the only one that was like there at the time. And so he's a linguist, a linguistics professor. And so he decides that he is going to see if he can get his dog to communicate with him what happened to his wife. That's what this book is about. I did not remember that. So anyways, um, I don't hate the way it's written so far, but like I said, I'm only like five or six percent in. It's a pretty short book. I think it's only 260 something pages. So I should have it done relatively soon, but I'm also reading several other things. So I don't know. Hello. So I realize this is kind of an awkward angle, but I have you resting on my laptop. Um, I don't feel like holding the phone. So Anyway, um, just wanted to update you on Dogs of Babel. Okay, so I'm on page 84 of 263. So somewhere between a quarter and halfway through. Um, and like I said last night, this book is about a man whose wife jumps from this giant apple tree in their backyard. Or, well, they don't know if she jumped or if she fell. Um... And she dies, and their dog is the only one home. And so this guy, who is a linguistics professor, uh, is trying to basically study the dog and see if he can get her to, like, somehow communicate with him about what happened to his wife. And so it's also it's that, and it's also interspersed with, like, how they met in their courtship um, and how they came to be married. And it's very, it's kind of weirdly written. It's, it's very like intimate. It's written in first person. Um, and so Paul, who is the husband, the widow, um, is writing it in such a way that it'll be like, oh, well, I've already told you about this kind of thing. Like as if we're reading 
his journal or something. I don't know. It's weird. Um, and I forgot a lot about this book, but like as I'm reading it, a lot more, obviously, I'm remembering. I read this six years ago, I think, but I think this book was written in 2004. I can't remember. It was in the first clip, but um, I don't dislike it. It's not, I don't know why I gave this book five stars. Maybe it will, like, really wow me. I'm not really sure. Um... Yeah, this is proving to be an interesting little, um, I don't know, experiment, we shall call it. This is a really good angle for all 100 of my chins. Yeah, that was a good, that was a good choice. Um, but yeah, it is Friday, and we have, like, no plans this weekend, which is awesome. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna check back in with you later this weekend hopefully and uh, maybe I'll have finished this book that would be nice wouldn't it I need you to know that I just filmed this entire clip and I didn't have my fucking camera on I wasn't filming I wasn't recording <sighs> okay so dogs of babble I finished it my husband can probably hear me recording. He's like, why are you saying the same thing? Okay, um, I finished Dogs of Babel last night, and it is not a bad book. I didn't think it was bad. I gave it three stars on my reread. It was just okay. Um, I've already told you kind of what this is about, and I can't remember if I mentioned in the last clip that the wife, Lexi, makes masks for a living. And so when I said earlier that I remembered a really weird scene where they had sex with masks in New Orleans, that was a weird scene. So that's the part I remembered about the book. Um, she makes masks um, and that is, I don't know how the hell someone survives just making masks for a living, but that's what she does. And um, so I do want to say a content warning for animal abuse because, like I said, uh, Paul, our main character, is trying to get his dog to talk and he does not abuse any animals. But there's a group of people, of men, uh, in this book who essentially have mutilated dogs in order to try to get them to speak. And while nothing is described in detail like, no one goes through the procedure, describes it in detail. Um, Paul interacts with these people at one point in the book, and it's very uncomfortable to read, and it made me feel very anxious. And I saw myself skimming a lot and just kind of, like, reading the dialogue because I didn't want to read too much about it because it's upsetting. Um, so, content warning for that. It's, um, there is a part that is a little hard to read. Um, this is dealing with a character who is clearly suffering from some sort of mental illness. I think it, in my personal opinion, it's never said in the book. It feels to me like maybe Lexi, Paul's wife, is bipolar. That's sort of how it's presented in the book. Um, she does have a lot, I mean, it, it could just be depression. Um, and so, like I said, Paul's trying to figure out if she killed herself or not. I wish that we had gotten some chapters from Lexi's point of view since we were flashing back to when they first met and their marriage up until the day she died. Um, but it was all still from Paul's point of view and I think that I really would have liked maybe some stuff from Lexi's perspective. Um, I just think that would have been interesting maybe to bend in her mind a little bit. Um, there's nothing, it, I don't have a problem with the way this book is written. It's just kind of an okay read and I do think that at times it's a little like pretentious did you hear my neck pop sorry um and maybe just a little heavy-handed um but I mean like I said I it's not a bad book I don't know why six years ago Amy would have given this book five stars I don't really understand why I did that but times have changed and my reading tastes have changed and I would no longer give that book five stars which is the point of this to kind of see if I still like them and to kind of have fun and see 
if I think these books are trash. I don't think this book is trash, but uh, it's definitely just a three star read for me. So that being said, um, I have three books left to read before I can complete this video. Let me go get them. Okay, so I have Landline by Rainbow Rowell, Scarlet Epstein Hates It Here by Anna Breslau, and Swimming by Joanna Hershon. So I have looked up and on my library's website, I can get, um, I have the audiobook for Landline and I have the ebook for Scarlet Epstein Hates It Here. They don't have any kind of ebook or audiobook for swimming. And like I said before, I've never heard anybody talk about this book. So I know no one else who has read this book. And I think this was the lowest rated, wasn't it? So I will probably be reading my physical copy of this. But I can read, if I want to, the ebook of this and listen to the audiobook of this because I feel like, um, it's hard for me to have more than one physical book going at the same time. Uh, so I think I will, um, I need to know which one of these to read first. What if I put, hmm, oh, I dropped all the my books. Okay, I need to know which one of these you all want me to read first, but you're not going to know, well, you can't know what they are. What if I did, I might, maybe I'll do a Twitter poll and I'll just put like an emoji like I'll put a phone and a wave and I don't know what I could put for Scarlet Epstein hates it here. Like, I don't know, like a sour faced emoji or something. Um, and just have you all choose what book I should read next. Maybe I'll do that. Okay, so I tried to do this from my computer and show you, but then I couldn't. So um, I just created, are you gonna let me, okay. I just created a tweet. I need your all's help in choosing the next book I read for a secret video I'm doing. Place your vote by choosing an emoji. And I don't know if it will focus for you, but I have a phone, an angry face, and a wave. Okay, so I only did it for four hours, um, so we'll see what you all choose. Okay, now I know that y'all are going to choose Swimming, which is the one book that I don't have an audiobook or ebook for. Guys, come on. Because there's already three votes and two of them are for swimming. I know you don't know what you're doing to me. It's fine. It's fine. I will just, um, I'm probably going to start one of the other ones anyways, in addition to start swimming, if that is the one that wins. Um, but I, oh shit, four votes. And there's another one for swimming. Okay, it's fine. I'm not going to watch them come in. I'm just going to chill the hell out. I would probably choose the wave to... It's the most exciting. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna get back with you when this when all the votes have come in. <laughs> Cover up your my shame. No, no your swimsuit area. Anyway, Scott's back here drinking a Catawba peanut butter jelly time brown ale. So if you live um, near me, near us then um, you can get those locally because Catawba is a local brewery. Anyway, that's not why I'm checking in, but that is what Scott is drinking. Um, <laughs> we are about to watch the Game of Thrones finale, or premiere, which is also not why I'm checking in. Guess what won the poll? Swimming. So I guess that's what I'm reading next. Um, I am actually, that was, wait, that's so close on my face. Um, I'm actually reading The Last Time We Say Goodbye by Cynthia Hand right now, um, which is not part of this video, and I am that far through it, so I'm not quite halfway, um, and so that's why I really wanted to finish this before I start swimming, so maybe I'll do that, um, but I'll try to get this finished in, like, the next day or two, and then I can start swimming real quick and then start um, Landline and or Scarlet Epstein hates it here. I knew swimming was gonna win. All right, anyways, I'm gonna check back in um, when I start swimming, I guess. Okay, bye. Hello, it is Monday. Um, we just talked last night before Game of Thrones, but I finished the physical book that I was reading I think I showed you all last night I was reading 
the last time we say goodbye by Cynthia Hand. Um, if you hear things in the background, Scott is making dinner. Sorry. You're fine. Um, so I thought that I would share with you all that I am going to start swimming by Joanna Hershon because that's what you all voted that I do. Look at how small this font is. Uh, I don't know why I'm acting like this. Like, I gave this book five stars. That's the... I really enjoyed this book. Now, um, okay. <clears throat> Let me read to you a... I guess I'll read to you just like a blurb on the back because it doesn't have like an actual... Okay. Two brothers, one girlfriend, one fateful night at a New Hampshire pond where jealousy rages out of control and suddenly the life of eight-year-old Lila Wheeler is forever changed. Living in New York a decade later, Lila, desperate to know what really happened that night, begins her search for the terrible truth and the lost brother who harbors it. Exquisitely sexual, Hershon's first novel heralds the arrival of a writer to watch. I don't remember it being exquisitely sexual, <laughs> although, who knows. Um, so anyway, we've tilted a little bit. I, was, I have a makeshift um, situation going on with my phone. Anyway, so I'm going to start this here in a minute. This is how many pages? Oh, there's like a book club thing in the back. 356 pages. Ooh. Okay, so I'm going to start this tonight. And then to be honest, I am probably going to start either Landline on audiobook tomorrow or Scarlet Epstein Hates It Here on ebook tomorrow. Um, just so that I can be kind of doubling up because I would like to get this done by the end of the month um, so that I can talk about it before my monthly wrap up where I will ruin everything by talking about these books. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to start reading this and um, I'll check back in later. week trying to get these books read um so first off swimming uh so you saw me start swimming in my last clip and I am just at the halfway point basically um this book is split up into three parts and I'm in part two now it is kind of a slog to get through um the writing is it's very overwritten and a lot of times I feel like in an attempt to make it seem um, flowery and meaningful it ends up sounding pretentious and overwritten um, so don't know what I thought about this one I, I still enjoy the story um, this is I'm I'm not super sure it's not exactly a mystery because pretty much everything is laid out for you in the first part which it takes so long to get to the point I mean the first parts like 130 something pages and it's just like 24 hours where it's just it's a lot um, so basically I can't remember if I said this in the last clip or not um, you have a family where you've got two way older brothers and um, a younger sibling, Lila, who is like eight, and the brothers are like 19, 20, and Aaron, the oldest brother, brings his girlfriend home for the weekend, Suzanne, and it's clear that Suzanne and Jack, the other brother, have kind of an attraction. They end up fooling around. Aaron get, finds out, gets upset, and some, an altercation happens, and one of the brothers dies. 
Um, and that's not exactly a spoiler. Um, <laughs> it just kind of is the setup. But it does take, you know something bad is going to happen, you know that that is going to happen. Um, and I won't tell you who dies, but, um, so then, it's not Lila, <laughs> and, uh, so then you flash forward, part two is like ten years later, and Lila is trying to kind of put pieces together, because she saw some things happen, and one of her brothers is dead, and the other one just sort of fled, and, um, she's not seen him since either, so she's trying to find him. Um... The the story itself, like I said, is is good, but God, the writing, man, the writing is hard to get through. So I'm at the halfway point, and I am having to like force myself to pick it up. So that's not great. Um, but then I also started uh, Scarlet Epstein hates it here. I started it on ebook after I'd already gotten quite a bit of swimming done, and I'm about a quarter of the way through this in ebook. Um, not super sure. I think I am somewhere around the 40 to 50 page mark. No. Yeah. Um, anyways, it's funny. I know why I liked it. It's laugh out loud. Um, it is about a girl who, her favorite TV show ever, which is a little bit kind of Vampire Diaries-y, um, ends up getting canceled and she is beside herself and so her and all of her, like, fan fiction, people that she writes fan fiction with, um, decide they're gonna just come up with some new fan fiction. And so she starts writing about the people at her school and she doesn't even change their names, which I'm like... Okay, um, and you know, I think they're gonna find out about it and be upset. So it is really funny. She has a neighbor who is like this sassy woman in her 70s who smokes a ton of weed, um, and she is really fun. Her name is Ruth. Um, so she's a good character, but yeah, I don't know yet about this one. Like I said, I'm only the quarter of the way through. I don't know that this will be a five star read, but I do think so far, with the exception of the long fanfic chapters, because I could not care less, I think I'm actually enjoying this probably the most out of any of the ones I've been rereading. So there's that. Um, so yeah, that is my update for now. Um, I've got my light out. Obviously, I'm getting ready to film. Um, probably, maybe, I don't know. I was just going to film this clip. It is really rainy and gross out right now. I went this morning and got my nails done and they look like, there's my thumbs, they're orange. They look like little glam Easter eggs. Why did I do this? You can't see my nails. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, yeah, went for like a glam rainbow look today and that was the only thing I did today. I really want to go to Target because they're having a shoe sale and I have my eyes on some sandals, but I don't know that I want to go out. So I might just film some more and edit and watch some Shit's Creek. Because that's kind of what I'm thinking I want to do. What I really need to do is read. Okay, I will update you <laughs> when I've read some more. Whenever that will be. Why am I doing weird stuff with my hands? Just cut off the clip, Amy. Hello, it is Monday, April 22nd. Um, so it's been a couple days since I have updated you. Um, yesterday, unfortunately, I got a stomach bug. Um, and it was unpleasant, as you can imagine. And, um, I was completely down and out. So, I took today off work to kind of recuperate from that. Um, I just took a shower and was able to hold down a little food. So that's good. I have zero makeup on and I, I don't know if you can see, probably not, but I broke a bunch of blood vessels around my eyes, um, throwing up. Isn't that darling? So it's just mixing in with my existing rosacea and age spots and I'm just feeling, feeling really good about my appearance. <laughs> An update. If I don't finish this book soon, I'm going to find a cliff and I'm gonna throw it off of it. Okay, I have 66 pages. I just got to page 290, chapter 21, 
I have 66 pages left of this book. It, I don't understand the point of it. I don't understand the point of this book. Like, and the longer it takes me to read it, the angrier I get about it. Like, I'm just like, why? Why did I ever give this book five stars? This is probably going to be the lowest rated of all of them, if I were to guess. I'm leaning it like a two right now. So, yeah, the goal is to read these last 66 pages tonight, today. Get it done by tonight. Um, I'm still reading Scarlet Epstein Hates It Here. I'm only about 33% done with that, but I'm reading it on ebook. And then when I finish this, I'm going to start Landline. I have Landline on audio, and I also have it in physical, so I might go back and forth or just whatever is easiest. That is the plan. So, God willing, I'm going to finish this book tonight. When I update you next, I'll be done with it. I finally finished it. Now, June, what do you think? I think June wants to be a part of the video. She doesn't. She hates being held. She's not the kind of cat that you hold. Mommy's gonna do it anyway. Mommy's gonna do it anyway. What do you think about that? Okay, go on. Okay, um, oh my god, I finally finished it. <sighs> I'm starting to feel kind of sick again. Like, I kind of thought that I was, like, over this little stomach bug. Or I'm kind of starting to feel sick again. Anyway, maybe it's just because I read that book. <laughs> and I was just so angry. Okay. Swimming. Um, like I've said in clips prior, I don't know what it was about this book that made me like it so much when I read it 15 years ago. It's not a good book. I don't recommend you read it. It's not a one star. It's a two. It's a two. I rarely give books one star. I think there's only been two or three books I've actually ever given one star. Um, but this is not a good book. Um, the whole, there's no mystery to it because you know exactly what's happened. It's basically just about Lila, the younger sister, finding out the truth that you already know. Um, and it is so overwritten and just so ridiculous. Like there's a sentence in here and it says, it's like, the door was painted white and the room was also white. Could you have not thought of a better way to put that? Like, I don't know, I just, okay, I'm over talking about this book. It's not a five star. We're going to pretend like I ever thought it was. Um, okay, <laughs> so like I said, um, so I found where I was in my physical copy of Scarlet Epstein Hates It Here. I am on page 89 of this, um, but I'm going to continue to read it on ebook, and then I'm just going to go ahead and start Landline tonight. Um, like I said, I do have this on audio, so I'll probably go back and forth a little bit. Um, yeah. But this is probably the one that I have the highest hopes for still really enjoying. Obviously, the three that I have finished have not been great successes. So, again, I don't know. Sorry, the lighting is crazy. Um, I don't know what I expected doing this. Um, but not liking any of the books was probably not what I expected. Um, but anyways, I'm going to start Landline tonight and continue with this. And it is the 22nd of April today. I think I said that earlier. So my goal is to have this done by the end of the month um, so that I can put my put this, this vlog up before uh, my wrap up so that I don't like spoil everything for everybody. I'm sure everyone's very excited about the secret video that nobody knows about. Um, but anyways... So I will get back with you when I am a little ways into Landline to let you know how I'm feeling about it. Um, and my th I've not read a ton of this in the last few days, and my thoughts on it haven't changed a, a lot, with the exception of, like, I think I said before, there's, like, long chapters of fan fiction that I do not care about at all. Um, but I kind of... This is my most recent read. I think this was read in 2016. And if I can remember... 
<clears throat> I think I remember thinking this book was all right, pretty witty. And then something happens at the end that's really like moving. And I think that like bumped it to a five star for me. Also, I think about the time in which I was reading this and like if it made me emotional, I was like, it's a five star, which is not always true. So um, I don't dislike this book, but it's not reading as a five star to me as of right now. So anyways, I'll catch back with you later um, once I have moved on. But So that's three down, two to go. I am back. Uh, same, similar view a couple days later. It is now Wednesday the 24th and uh, I have made some headway on both Landline and Scarlet Epstein Hates It Here. So this is probably going to be one of my last clips to which you probably say thank god because this vlog is long. Um, okay so I am currently Per my ebook, I'm about 70% through this. Um, so, I don't know. Oh, yeah, I'm like around the 200 page mark of 282. So, um, Scarlet is a very unlikable character. She's very bitter and kind of mean. And I can see why people wouldn't like her. Um... If I remember, she does have some character growth and some, like, I don't know if redemption is necessarily necessary. Necessarily necessary. Ooh. Um, but she, she does grow, and it's quippy. It's funny, but it does feel like it's trying far too hard to be quippy and funny. And, and I don't know where the line is where with trying too hard and just feeling natural. I just know it when I feel it when I read it. Um, so, no, this is not reading as a five star to me, but I don't hate it. It's probably going to be more of a three. Again, I, and if you remember, I said kind of the first time that I wasn't like overly impressed with this book till the end. So maybe something will happen in the end and, and it'll change my mind. So I might actually finish this one tonight. Um, and I reached the halfway mark last night in Landline. Um, this one is a breeze to get through. Super easy to read. I read the first quarter one night and then the second quarter last night. So, you know, hopefully I'll have this done then in two days. Maybe three if I dedicate some time to reading Scarlet Epstein tonight. Um, I still really like Landline, which, thank God there's a book in this in this stack that I still might give five stars to because I was beginning to think that maybe I wasn't going to give five stars to any of them and then I would just scrap this whole thing and be like, JK, I used to have terrible taste. Um, and maybe that is the point of the, I don't think there is a point of this video other than it's just kind of fun to see what I think about books I used to give five stars to um, that are... Mm, I wouldn't say universally panned, but certainly lower rated than I gave them. Um, but yeah, I still really love this story. Sorry about the light on this. Um, I love this cover. I like Rainbow Rowell a lot. I don't really care for Carry On because I didn't... I'm kind of in that camp of people that didn't um, really care for the fan fiction part of Fangirl. Man, she can write dialogue that is so effortless effortlessly witty. So if you're comparing these two, this feels like you're trying too hard to put a bunch of pop culture references in. And and yes, I do still like laugh out loud sometimes reading this book, whereas this one feels a little more like it, it flows a little better. I'm not saying they're totally opposites, but I do feel like this flows a a bit better. Um, but anyway, as of right now at the halfway point, I would still give this five stars. I don't know if I'll change my mind when I'm done reading it. We shall see. Hey, so it is Sunday and I finished all of the books. Um, you might notice, sorry, I have no makeup on. Um, some different stuff. I've moved my locker up here behind me. Um, <clears throat> I will give you all a library tour once I get the rest of my room in order. Um, so the shelves behind me, um, I've done a tour of those, but uh, the rest of my library has kind of been a mess and I worked for several hours today um, 
kind of getting all that in order. So anyway, that's neither here nor there, but you'll notice a little bit of a different background. So I want to talk about the last two books that I finished for this little project. Um, I finished both of these two days ago, I think. Um, so the first one that I finished was Scarlet Epstein Hates It Here by Anna Breslau. I ended up giving this one a three on reread. Um, like I said in clips before, it was funny. Um, I didn't dislike it. Three, again, is a pretty average rating. Um, but this needed way more depth if it wanted me to feel how I think I was supposed to feel. Um, I remember why I gave this five stars now. There is something that happens that is spoilery in this book. And at the time, I was very sensitive to this particular thing. And so it made me very emotional. And I think that I just sort of gave it five stars because it made me emotional. So... I think that was a good reason at the time maybe to give it five stars, but um, I definitely don't agree with that rating now. So I think that if you want a kind of edgy, funny, uh, YA contemporary, I mean, I recommend this one. I don't think this is a bad book. And I am happy to report that I still give Landline five stars. Can you believe it? One of these books, I still gave five stars. Um, I'm gonna hold it up over here because it's more comfortable. Uh, okay, this is not a perfect book. This has sort of the similar, like, edginess um, in certain things rub me the wrong way, like just little things here and there. Um, but it's just not enough for me not to love it. And, and I do really love it. I love Georgie and Neil. Um, I love that Neil is a very unconventional love interest. Um, and I just, I don't know, there's something very charming and very easy about Rainbow Rowell's writing, and if you've ever read anything by her, I think you could probably agree. Um, and I don't, I kind of looked at some of the low ratings on this book, and I just don't get it. Like, somebody said they were like, could you have a worse love interest? Neil is fat and short and unhappy and all and I was like excuse me um so I don't know why people hate that or not hate this book but I don't know why this is so low like rated so low because I really still loved this um and like I said it's not a perfect book and for me I don't rate books on how perfect they are or how politically correct they are if a book is five stars for me, it's because I loved it, personally. Um, and I can love things that are, quote, problematic or have different elements in it that aren't great. And I will tell you about those, but it doesn't, it isn't necessarily always why I like or dislike a book, if that makes sense. Uh, so that is it. Um, so I don't have my other... I only have one other book. The other two I don't own. But um, I was going to show you all five of them. But I don't have them. Uh, that is it for this very long vlog. I hope that you have stuck around this long. If you have, congratulations. You're amazing. Um, and I hope that you enjoyed this. Let me know if you like this kind of content. Um, I know some booktubers do this sort of thing. I know Lala does this sort of thing a lot. I love watching her videos like that. Like, I'm like, give me a 45-minute La La video where she just reads a bunch of weird books. But, I mean, I don't have that kind of following. and I'm not beloved like her. So I would understand if you were like, where does she get off making a 45-minute long video? But let me know uh, if you enjoy this kind of content, if you want to see more of it. I do have plans for some other stuff like this. So hopefully you all enjoy it. Um, yeah, so if you liked this, please give it a thumbs up. Hit subscribe if you want to see more content from me. And uh, yeah, as always, I'll be back soon with more book talk. Bye!